Hi, hi, welcome. Nice to have you here. If you're new, welcome. This is my A to C stitch with me where I stitch. <sighs> my plan is to stitch all the patterns in the Frosty Forest series on one big piece of fabric. This is a 32 count pearl gray Belfast linen. Uh, you can see part one here is done, that is the raccoon cabin and I'm currently on part two, that is the snowy deer and it's going to look like this. So it's the Frosty Forest series and it's by Country Cottage Needleworks. There are nine parts of this series and so far I have done everything here on camera for you to see and can watch this uh, series on uh, YouTube. So yeah, uh, I do different things. Sometimes I explain different methods I use when stitching. Uh, sometimes it's silent and I just have music on. I usually do write that on those uh, videos. And my plan is to actually uh, do some full coverage videos if I haven't already done it by the time you see this because these videos are pre-recorded. Um, I plan to do some more stitch with me so that is not this A to C stitch with me and then I will do those uh, like just silently when I sit and sit and stitch and not talk and this will have more talking in it. So unless something happens, like one time I ended up not having a voice for a few days and I had to record and <laughs> record with no voice, that's uh, difficult. <laughs> I could luckily speak a little bit. It wasn't totally lost on me or else I would have started to do sign language or just have some captions saying everything I normally say. Not that I have something I usually say, but once in a while I like to recap and keep up to date. If there is new people watching, they might like to know that it's um, what this series is. Uh, what A to C stitch with me actually is and it's just basically a stitch with me where I do everything on camera <laughs> that's why it's called A to C because I'm doing everything in between on camera <laughs> so yeah um, last time I was in the middle of using the curiosity tag where I the question, question number seven was, what is your favorite project you finished? And I rambled on about what project that was previously that I had written down in my book that does not, uh, it's not correct anymore. So this time I will actually tell you what my favorite project is now. But first, let's get uh, a little bit into the stitching before I start talking about that. It all, always takes me a few second minutes to be able to stitch and talk at the same time because that's, uh, that's a skill that is difficult and depending on what day I have with my illness or just what part of the day it is um so yeah cutting a little bit into this and i'm i'm stitching this tree the way i would stitch with parking and that's what i do that's why there is a floss hanging at the front of the fabric that's the parking method you hang the floss on the front of the fabric that's how you park um and other than that there isn't much rules. Um, some say, oh, you have to park it in the hole. You are supposed to use it next. 
uh, but you don't need to do it that way. I know, uh, I think it's Stephanie, Miss So So Crafty. I believe she, when she stitch, she she usually just park the floss when she's uh, done with that color in a section, and um, and instead of cutting it off and securing it, she is just putting it up just right where it, that color was uh, of the stitch and. Um, if she later need to use it, then she will. Um, I'm not sure what she do if if she secures it and cut it off, or if she uh, trails it at the back. Um, but she at least she she park it on the front of the fabric. Um, so. Um, so basically parking is you hang the floss at the front of the fabric and of course always hanging it where you are supposed to use that color next. It's easier to keep track of what color that is, especially if you do a full coverage that has a lot of color changes and so on. Uh, I know some people, um, I think Sarah the Stitching Mommy, she usually, she park it where it's supposed to be used next, uh, but it it's, some people do it always in the same hole of that stitch, but she doesn't do that. I think it's with, um, when she do half stitching or 10 stitching. Uh, so she will mark off on her patterns with a little, uh, ball pen dot um, where that floss is parked in that uh, square so on the square on the pattern she will make a little dot uh, at the corner she she did park the floss so there's many different way of doing it some people I've heard a lot of people saying that oh parking you you have to park it in the place you are supposed to use it next. And you actually don't. Parking is just uh, basically uh, leaving your floss at the front of the fabric to use later. Uh, and how you do that, that is totally up to you and how your brain works and what you find the best. But of course, there are some people that have some methods that can be a great way to do it. And as I said, it really is a good way to park it where you are supposed to use it next. I do that. Uh, if you can see here, I actually, when I stitch um, over two, or if I stitch on Ada, I will actually stitch in the middle of that square at the bottom. Um, but I still know what square that floss belongs to that I'm supposed to, where I'm supposed to use it next. So um, So yeah, that's just a tiny bit about parking. Um and this is how I usually do my parking, is going row by row. Now it's row by row in this... Um, in this motif, or this part of the design. Uh, when I do full coverage project, I usually do row by row that are 10 stitches... Um, wide um, but sometimes I, I can park with uh, like more width to the stitches but usually it's t I say 10 by 10 um, 
but I don't I actually don't follow the block that much um, it's more row by row the way I stitch so, so this isn't too off how I would normally do this okay so are you excited to know what I think is my favorite project I have finished maybe some of you already are guessing maybe some of you are like screaming to me oh please say it's that project who knows uh, <laughs> So please, if you if you want, tell me um, what favorite project y you think I have finished. So what is your opinion of the favorite project I have finished? For me, I think... I think, I don't know, I think, I would have to say uh, Curious Huggable, still. <laughs> it's, um, and this is pre-recorded in August, so if I finish my Lady and the Tiger by then, it's definitely Lady and the Tiger. <laughs> um, or maybe not, I'm not sure, I will see when I finish it. Uh, but uh, Curious Huggable was my first aid. Uh, if you have followed me a long time on Flosstube, you know that that piece holds a really special meaning in my heart. Um, I'm doing these stitches the wrong way, what I usually do. So uh, That's how it goes when I can stitch and talk at the same time. Um, so, so yeah, that's hold a special place in my heart. But I do have to say, when I finished A Legend of the Blue Sea, that was close actually to taking its place, just because I have done so many conversions on it. Um, so it... Um, So yeah, it 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 ended up looking really really good. Also, the baby sampler that I finished, Winnie the Pooh. Uh, you never saw it fully finished because I didn't want to show uh, the name and so on on the my floss tube. Uh, unless by this time I have changed my mind and inserted a pictures and maybe put a sensor on it yeah I'm, I'm not sure right now I'm don't know if I will do it or not um, but it's not yeah it, it, it looks really good but at the same time there's something special about Kiyosogable full coverage my first aid it's a hate. Um, yeah, it uh, feels a little bit more special than the other ones, at least for me. Um, but as I said, the, A Legend of the Blue Sea was close to take over, especially since I finished it in such an extreme way that suddenly I had two days to finish it and I managed to knock it out and do I think actually I did over 5,000 stitches in those two days I beat every record with it and I framed it <laughs> in those days uh, that was uh, madness and because of that it, it, that's a really cool finish also just because of that and I did a lot of conversion i did like put beads on and metallics and uh, yeah changed it up a whole lot so 
and it turned out uh, great. So let me see where I am in the pattern. It usually helps to know where I'm at. Especially when I struggle to stitch and talk today. So, so yeah. I think I have to say Curious Huggable. Uh, but I have a lot of nice finishes. Uh, like uh, the um, Bell. And uh, I Got a Dream by Frigid Stitch. That I stitched with all in silks from Silks for You. Those are pretty awesome. Um, so, so yeah, but, but I think our Kiyosakable still wins the race. So. So, what do you say? Do you want a new question on the curiosity tag? I'm going to do one either way what you say. So the question number eight is, if you lost your stitchy bug, what did you do to get it back? Um, uh, the end of last year, if you remember, Stiach along really almost broke me. Uh, I was struggling so much and I was just forcing myself and knocking it out to get it away because I knew it would bug me if it was still there. Um, and uh, I ended up like really I didn't want to stitch at all. I had so much trouble with wanting to stitch, but I knew I needed to get back up on the horse and stitch again. So I actually decided to pull out one of those whips that I really, really love to stitch on. Uh, I think actually this year I have done something similar, just not in... I haven't lost my stitchy bug that much as I did with the arch along. Um... And uh, I pulled out my ink circles uh, for in the bush that I converted myself. That also looks amazing. Um, so, um, so yeah, I pulled that out. It was on a 46 count. Uh, hand dyed fabric by Extra Design called Morning Coffee, I believe. Um, and um, it was in silk, silks for you. I love stitching with silk. Uh, it had a lot of uh, just one color of silk that I just outlined everything and then I filled in with another color that was highly variegated like a rainbow variegated color uh, so when I lost my stitchy bug I actually um, did um, stitch on that and I in the beginning I just stitched with that um, black gray silk that was the outlining and I loved it that was so so much fun um, uh, and it brought my stitchy bug back so that was really nice and this year when I have almost lost my stitchy bug I um I have previously picked up my lady and the tiger and start to stitch on that. But this year I with 
the new revelation in my head that I'm actually a uh, more of a progress stitcher than a product or process stitcher um, has made it so I have started to not put projects away before I know I have reached a point where I feel I have good progress and when I reach that point I really like want to uh, continue stitching on it um, and um, so there's so many projects that I, I I really do love right now and want to pick up again uh, last year I stitched so much full coverage uh, with like finishing my QS Huggable and so on and this year I don't feel I have focused as much on full coverage uh, I have because of the Lady and the Tiger just that one has a lot of big blocks of color so it's not that hayed type of stitching um, not at least in the sections where I am at now. There has been some really confetti heavy sections previously. But it makes it so I'm really missing those um, confetti heavy stitching. So I picked up my SK Butterflies Galore and stitched for the like a 90 day challenge with the full coverage fanatics and uh, it really brought back the the one thing for I'm actually going to do these two stitches right here the Danish method um, it's just two stitches so it won't be as noticeable even though it's a variegated floss um, And stitching full coverage like that again, like really confetti heavy. When I was doing it, I was like, oh, I'm so glad I'm only stitching a few stitches each day. But now that I don't have that anymore, I switched over to do my Lion King instead. And that also has big blocks of color a lot of the time. I am now really missing stitching confetti. So I did stitch a little bit on my uh, The Possibilities by Haid or also known as The Evolutions and uh, found out how I liked stitching diagonally and so on this is a few weeks ago not a few weeks a week or two ago um, And um, I, I had to put it away and I really did not want to put it away. I wanted to pull it back out and just stitch even with all the confetti and I just loved, loved stitching on it. Um, so yeah. Um, it, it it really depends why I have lost my stitchy bug as to what will uh, get it back. Um, so, uh, that's the long answer on that one. <laughs> But isn't that what I normally do? Have long answers to short questions. At least that's what I feel I have. So, uh, question number nine. And 
I'm just going to pin stitch first so I don't do a mistake because I don't want to do a mistake I was just double checking that the white here was stitched correctly or else I would have been mad at myself. So yeah, question number nine. Do you have to make sure to finish a pattern or lay it in a UFO pile and start a new one? Uh, I have multiple whips at a go. I usually don't UFO whips. Uh, I have put some whips on break this year, which is um, very unusual for me to do. Uh, but it's it's mainly to to focus more on other whips um, that in my mind has higher priority to get finished. That or that I want. I have a higher priority to wanting to finish. Um, so yeah, but usually I uh, finish up a project. Um, but I, I also, I don't have a problem having multiple projects on the go. So there's that, and especially with the new progress stitching, um, and um, uh, it just um, I have gotten through so many projects with this this last half of the year and uh, I really do think if I can keep up what I have done and how good progress I have got on everything that I actually have pulled out that it wouldn't be too bad to have one or two more whips in my pile but of course, it also depends on what types of whips I have, uh, because uh, a full coverage whip, uh, you would need to do more stitches to get what I will, would see as good progress. Um, so... Um, this is a little bit more difficult to stitch and my brain isn't playing nice. Um, yeah, full coverage project usually needs more stitches for you to be able to say that you have done a, a good or decent amount of progress on that whip. So with having a bunch of smaller whips, that's not that big of a problem because it's easy to get easier to get good progress on them. Um, so. But I am, I have one full coverage that I am going to start before end of this year. I, I just really want to get some other, some other projects first out of the way. And the one I want to start is uh, Pocahontas by Hayd. It's a story keep by 
Was it Melanie Dellen that is having those? She has uh, um, Belle, uh, Mulan, Pocahontas. Uh, she have multiple of those. And they are made into story keeps. So it's uh, those story keeps that I that I have. I have two of them. Um, uh, Amanda from Pixel Stitches was so kind to give them to me as a Christmas present. That and uh, uh, another hate. And um, she said that, oh, you have to surf one next year and I was like yeah no problem and that has been at the top of my list to start of a full coverage project I just have some full coverage project that I first want to finish before I start any new ones uh, so it's turning out to take longer than I first thought it would take me to to finish but that's okay I will start it this year and when I started I I also want to um, to start it at a time where I can get a lot of good progress in on it maybe when I have finished um, all the extra credits for a book and especially if I have finished the homework pretty early like a Monday or Tuesday if I can f uh, get a finish that fast sometimes I do and uh, then I would have like f five or maybe six days to to just focus on Pocahontas and that would most likely give me some good progress on her. Um, so that is at least what I'm thinking. So I usually like to finish a pattern before. not lay it in a year of four or five before starting something new but I still have multiple projects I just uh, I like to finish some project so it's not like constantly starting new things and never finishing anything Because I'm not that big about the finishes, but I'm with being a progress stitcher. After a while, the the progress that is the end point is finished. So Okay, so we have I'm actually going to start at this direction because we are actually at the end of the green on this tree. There's just a few more finishing up this row and I'll mirrored this part. Oh, I have not zoomed you in for this video. I'm so sorry. That I have totally forgot to do. So you have been seeing me stitching pretty far away. Luckily I haven't demonstrated anything special. <laughs> I think... Let's 
because if you're new here, I usually zoom you all the way in. Um, so you can see uh, the stitches that I do. And then there is just one more question in the curiosity tag. It's number 10. 10. What is your most hated type of stitch? Not a stitch? A non-stitch? I don't know. I actually haven't met anything that I don't like yet. Um, I, I usually don't have a problem with French knots. I lo know a lot of people have that. Uh, I know some people would say all the stitches with metallics, but I don't have that much trouble with metallics. Uh, I haven't tried too many of the specialty stitches. I have done a few, uh, but all of the ones I have done, I have really enjoyed. So I think I need to do more specialty stitches and maybe try and find something I don't like to do. Because if this was uh, a while back, I would say tent stitching or continental tent stitch uh, on full coverage designs because I didn't like doing tent stitch. But after SK Butterflies Galore, uh, Actually, not after SK Butterflies Galore, but after I find the diagonal method and tried that on SK Butterflies Galore and doing that I was doing tent stitching or half stitching, I actually found that it was uh, a pretty nice way to stitch. Still, I like better how the stitches look when doing full stitches, uh, but... If I do tent stitching, it's usually on the small accounts. And I am, I have some <clears throat> a project kitted up that is on 40 count, that is full coverage. And those I'm going to do uh, one over one tent stitch or half stitch. Um, so, um, but when you get down to that count, especially full coverage, like with my SK Butterflies Galore, you, you, you can tell a little bit, but you can't tell that much in the end that um, they doesn't look perfect because it's, it's hard to actually be able to see those stitches. Um, I'm also not a total fan of how it fills the square out since it's just half of a stitch and not a full stitch. So I never feel the coverage is really good no matter how many uh, flaws of color I use. I still feel there is like a little section that just doesn't get stitched with tent stitching. But at the same time with a full coverage and especially being farther further away uh, from this the stitching in the end which you usually will be with bigger projects um, I I think now that it will look fine um, and I was pretty uh, positive about the result on my SK Butterflies Galore. M much more, I liked it much more than I originally thought I would be. Um, so. So. 
So I would say that. Um, it's not a stitch, but I don't like a uh, continental. Uh, no, I don't like like extreme cross country stitching. Uh, I do not think I could ever do that. And if I were to do it, I would do it uh, the Amanda way stitched pixel which goes from the lowest amount of color until the most amount of color uh, but still I just can't see myself stitching that way um, I like better to see the picture grow the way it does with parking where, where you fill everything in as you go um, so, but of course, that is just my preference. It doesn't have to be your preference. And it's not really a hated type of stitch. So the answer to that would be, I don't have any. I don't have a hated type of stitch. So. So that was the curiosity tag. So actually the next tag in my book will be the for real tag that is actually made by Adele. Uh, and I think it's Adele from Del Cat Stitches. Uh, she is one of my best friends in the cross stitch community and um, that is actually a tag I really are looking forward to uh, doing together with you because yeah. I am um, I have all the tags I have read through at least once and uh, I really think that for reals, the tag, it's, it's really funny and it's a really fun questions. And uh, so, yeah. And if there is any one of those tags that you want to um, comment on, either your opinion, like what is your most hated type of stitch feel free. I would love to know and read that. Uh, if there is anything I said that like, if you know of a hated type of stitch I have like talked about, I'm, I have hated, then please tell me because I forgot. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, So feel free to comment on the the tags and so on when I'm answering those questions. If there is anything you think about when you're answer, answering that question, feel free. I would love to hear your opinion or your story. To get to know you a little bit better because now you know a whole lot about me and I don't always know that much about you. So this is starting to look good, huh? What do you say? So this is how it's going to look in the end and here it's what it looks like now. So I'm just missing the stem of this tree and then there is uh, two more trees to do, some snowflakes and then we will actually start stitching on the deers. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. I think that is 
one of the most fun parts in the series is all the animals and birds and stuff you're stitching. Especially like this raccoon and deer. Because that is not animals I usually find in a, in a, a cross stitch that I like. Or that I... You don't see them as often in cross stitching as a general. So... It's a little bit more rare to find and um, it's really fun to stitch them. So I also want the, um, what is it called, is it the Forest Friends? Uh, I think it's also Country Cottage Needleworks and that has a lot of animals in it too. So that is also one of the projects I would like to do from the same designer and stitch. And I want to do all of them on one big piece of fabric, of course, because I'm crazy like that. Um, so yeah, but that's, that's in the future. <laughs> I need to try and think about what I have and finish up what I have before dreaming about everything that I want to buy, that I want to stitch in the future. But I will say with so-and-so suddenly closing down with much, not much warning, I'm like oh, really scared that the same will happen to, to Patchwork Rabbit in the UK where I got this. I don't know why there's no reason for them to to close down as I know uh, but I'm like really scared of that and that's where I want to buy that uh, those patterns th that series and just get every specialty floss and DMC and so on from them because I do think I found that the DMC is of course cheaper than buying them here in Norway uh, and I think they are a little bit cheaper than they normally would be in the UK. I'm not sure, uh, but I think so. So just I found that it's, uh, it doesn't cost me much more and I get everything that I want in one place. And that's really nice. Everything I need, I get from one place. And that is also one of the things I love with so and so was that they had like almost everything. So when I did an order from there, it was always like a really huge order because they had everything I needed. They had middle hill kits. Take care and I'll see you next Friday. Goodbye.